Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today, thanks to my friends here at Red River Chevrolet in Bossier City, Louisiana, we're going to take a look at the all new, refreshed for 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe. And this is the 2021 on my right and on my left is the 2020 model. Same exterior color, same trim package, both are the LT package. We're going to make it real easy for you to see what's new as we go throughout our exterior and interior tour and see what Chevrolet has done to improve what is the fifth generation of the Tahoe. And considering the fact that the Tahoe has been around since the year 1995, tell me in the comments, do you believe this is the best Tahoe so far? Well, by the end of the video, you're definitely going to be able to make a decision on that and tell me why you believe this is the best, or maybe why not, or maybe you've got a combination of, well, this is something I really like, but I wish it was still this way from the previous generation. So let's get started with our tour. Okay, guys, at first glance, it's pretty obvious that there are some differences here. As you can see, I've turned the hazard lights on and the headlights on on the 2020 and 2021 models. Obviously, the biggest difference here besides the design and layout that you see here, these are LEDs. That's LED headlights and taillights on the 2021 model. So obviously, that's different, not only with the design, but the type of headlight you have compared to the 2020 model here. The blinker itself, blinker slash hazard light, obviously that design has changed. And this looks obviously a lot like what you see on the 2019 refresh that we saw with the Silverados. The grills are obviously different. And one thing that looks the same for the most part would be the hood. The overall design of the hood, yes, that is the same. But in the interest of fair reporting, the lines are a little bit different between the two. You've got a line here that goes straight down on the 2020 model and a line that doesn't do the same thing. It actually comes off to the side on the 2021 model for you gearheads out there. That's just something I happen to notice. I know a lot of people aren't going to be super interested in that, but obviously whether you're a gearhead or not and you're planning to purchase a 2021 Tahoe, you're probably going to want to know what's under the hood. So let's find out what the LT model has on this one. Okay guys, with the LT trim level, you're gonna get the 5.3 liter V8. It's at 355 horsepower, so definitely not going to be lacking for power. The gas mileage is 16 miles per gallon in the city and 20 out on the highway, and it's mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. And yes, for those of you who watch regularly, you will find the struts to help hold the hood up. One of my favorite features on any vehicle just because of the simple convenience that it gives you if you choose to open the hood or need to open the hood on your 2021 Tahoe. Okay guys, it's not too terribly difficult to look at the Tahoe and see the differences between the 20 and the 2021 model. I don't have to really say a whole lot about that, but of course you've got the same great features such as passive entry, you know, the slew of safety features that you've come to expect here with these GM models. They're here too. And of course the design of the side view mirrors has changed and really basically everything, the design of the windows, just a very nice looking vehicle overall. The lines, I believe, have greatly been improved. And one thing you're gonna see on this particular model, I was told when this one came in that it didn't come with these 20 inch wheels on it. So Red River Chevrolet decided to add those to give it a better look. Okay guys, through the magic of editing, I don't have to say a whole lot about the differences between the 2020 and the 2021 models of the Tahoe as far as the differences you're going to see here on the rear. Pretty obvious, but yet pretty pronounced. Still have, of course, the power lift gate here on the LT model, if I can get that button to work for me right there and get that open for you. Now, one thing that's not going to be different is how you lower these rear seats. You still got the same latch and strap, so you're gonna pull on that latch right there and let those seats down, the 60-40 split rear seats. Very easy to lower, but I have to say they're a little heavy to pick back up. You just pull on that strap and you can do that. Good news for your rear seat passengers on this refreshed model. Because of the increased wheelbase and the increased length, and for those that may not know, those are two different things. 
the overall wheelbase of the Tahoe or any vehicle for that matter. The wheelbase is measured from the center of one tire to the center of the rear, whether it's front to rear or rear to front. That's how you get your wheelbase. But the overall length has increased here too. And what that's done is increased interior space. This Tahoe is going to ride better than any prior to it, any generation. And great news for your rear seat passengers that are going to be sitting here in the third row. They've got an increased space of 10 additional inches. Very nice. And one thing I like here with the rear storage area, when you raise the floor up, whatever you're storing in here, notice how I just picked up on that and it just stays in place and then it's easy to just pull back down but I like how it just stays in place. That's something that I'd like to see adapted on many more vehicles other manufacturers make out there because a lot of the time it either doesn't stay up unless you hold it up or you have to latch it in place or something like that. And there are other systems that are similar to this out there, but always a nice convenience for those who need to access whatever they've got back here or if they need to access the tools that are found there for changing a tire if the need arises. And of course, one thing that's also gonna be different here is the button to lower the rear lift gate to close this rear lift gate. It used to be here on the right hand side. Now in this model of Tahoe, the new version, it's on the left hand side. Still just as convenient, just in a different position. Okay guys, as I give you a look around the interior back here for your middle row seat passengers and your rear seat passengers, obviously there are a lot of USB ports here in the Tahoe. You've got four total air conditioning vents here, two that are focused for your middle row seat passengers and two more for your rear seat passengers. The controls for controlling the air conditioner itself, of course, right here on the rear of the center console, but that has been redesigned as far as the overall look goes. Now, what about accessing the rear seats? Well, you're going to pull up on the, there's two levers here, one for moving the seat back and forth. And this back one that has the times two on it allows you to lower the seat back. And of course you can do that to maximize your cargo space. But then there is also a latch here on the back of the seat, pull up on that, tilting the entire seat forward, making it easy for access in and out of the third row seats. And then as I put that up, we're gonna move that back a little bit. That's that front lever of those two that you can use to reposition the seat itself. Again, quite a large amount of space back here. You've got a couple of storage bins on the rear doors themselves, and of course, a couple of pockets here on the rear seats. Quite a bit of storage back here, but obviously a nice amount of space. Whether you're sitting on these center seats or the rear seats, definitely going to be spacious and comfortable. Okay guys, as we hop into the front seat, the changes continue here. And there is one particular significant change, probably two that we're gonna talk about and I'm gonna reposition you later so you can see them a little bit better. But it has to do with the shifter and of course the infotainment screen, which you can see is in a completely different position than it was with the fifth generation, more inset into the dashboard. Now it's actually sitting up kind of outside of the dashboard, still mounted into the dashboard, but its position has changed. And of course it's overall look and feel have too, but still very easy to use. And the shifter is the same, but again, we'll talk about that a little bit more when I reposition you in just a minute. Nice instrument cluster. I like the change there. It looks good. Of course, it's modern. It fits in with other GM vehicles that we've looked at, at in the past, such as the Silverado. And you've got the steering wheel mounted controls here. Everything you're used to controls for the radio on the back of the steering wheel. You can run through a lot of different information and settings here on your dashboard with the steering wheel mounted controls, answer and hang up on phone calls, voice commands, all that good stuff. And of course, this is a four wheel drive vehicle and you're going to manage the four wheel drive capabilities over here to the left of the steering wheel, just to the left of the controls for the headlights. Those are mounted right next to each other. And just above that, the electric parking brake and all of the different safety features that you have available here on this Tahoe that you can turn off or on depending on what your situation is. Now, in the interest of fair reporting, you've got a little storage right here to the left of the, or excuse me, to the right of the infotainment screen. But a little interesting quirk, we'll say, not to go all Doug DeMiro on you or anything like that, but this is how you open it. It's a very interesting little 
pocket here will say, if you just push on that, it's not gonna open and don't try to force it. There's a little button on the back. You're going to push on that button and it's gonna open and you can put, well, whatever you wanna stick in there. It actually has kind of a, an interesting little finish inside of materials. Feels kind of like velvet in there. And then you're just gonna push on that to close it again. Just kind of an interesting little storage space. I'm kind of curious to know what would fit in there depending on what you have. Um, not a lot of space there, but just an extra storage part or area, I should say. Of course, you've got the air conditioning vents here. The controls for that located right underneath dual zone air conditioning, dual zone climate control, I should say. The controls for the radio wireless charging here for your cell phone and a couple of cup holders. And then, of course, you have a nice large console here another USB port, a lot of great features here and a lot of nice space. Of course, the steering wheel itself is fully adjustable on the LT model that we're looking at today. Of course, it's manually adjustable, but it is adjustable telescopically and you can move that up or down depending on how you need to reposition that. And the latch for that is located just underneath the steering wheel itself and not too terribly far forward. I've seen on some of the vehicles that I've reviewed in the past that that little release that you pull down on that lever you pull down on to move the steering wheel to adjust it is sometimes so far forward you almost don't know it's there not the case here so let me reposition you we'll talk about the push button shifter and how that works very simple and the infotainment screen okay guys i wanted to show you the push button shifter located right here to the right of the steering wheel and the left of the infotainment screen. And here's how it works. It's a combination of, of pushing down. You go into park, you're gonna push down on the P. To go in reverse, you're actually going to pull up. Neutral is the same way as park. You're going to push on that and then drive, you're going to pull up. And you can't actually push drive or reverse down. You can only pull up on those two. And then of course, going back into park right there, pretty simple but just something i wanted to show you real quick on how easy it is to use this tell me in the comments section guys what do you think about this new system with the push button shifter and its location all right guys like i said if you haven't looked at any of my other videos or seen any recently refreshed GM vehicles from the last few years, this infotainment screen is definitely going to look different but it's very easy to use very easy to navigate all of the typical features you're used to, you can go in and change pretty much anything you want to, whether it's with the system, with the apps, or with the vehicle itself. And of course, you've got the home button here or underneath those air conditioning vents that I mentioned earlier. And of course, you can go back here between all of your different settings. There is what the camera looks like. And being that the infotainment screen is in more of an upright position, it definitely in my opinion has a better view to it than what it used to so it's not inset into the dashboard so you're not going to get as much of a glare depending on where the sun is as you would have before of course you've got navigation apple carplay android auto you've got your wi-fi hotspot everything you're pretty much used to or maybe you're not if you haven't had a new vehicle in the last few years but the thing i like about this system is that it's super easy to navigate you can find your way around to anything you want to no matter what it is you may be looking for you even have a trailering option here that's going to help you out i'm not going to be able to go into that right now because i don't have a trailer hooked up to the tahoe obviously but it's nice to know that that is there and it will walk you through quite a few things and basically through a checklist of information to help trailering to be an easier experience for you Okay guys, we're going to run out for a little test drive here with the Tahoe and obviously the acceleration isn't going to be as good as it would be with the larger motor and there are a couple of different engine options including a diesel engine option here for the Tahoe for the 2021 model year, but I've got the 5.3 liter under the hood here. I'm not going to stay in it too long because we saw somebody who was pulled over earlier, but you know the acceleration in a large vehicle like this you're gonna be going faster than you think just because it's large and heavy, but once it gets moving, it's moving pretty good. So if you need to accelerate into traffic or go around a slower moving car, uh, based on what I just did, that shouldn't be a problem. 
But the main thing that I'm noticing here, I mean, the handling characteristics are pretty much the same as any 2020 model that I drove, the fifth generation. But I'm definitely noticing a bit of a difference in the ride quality, like I talked about earlier with that longer wheelbase. You're going to have a smoother ride. You're going to see a difference in that respect. But if I was going to see something on this Tahoe that isn't here, that I would like to see, it would be the magnetic ride suspension. And for those who may not be familiar with that, that's what gives you immediate change in the ride quality. It adapts to the road conditions. And it's, it's very quick to do so. That's not here. It may be available on some of the other trim levels. I know we're going to try and look at the high country as soon as it's available from Red River Chevrolet because they do have one at the dealership right now. But like I said earlier, it was in the service department having some new tires and wheels put on it. Kind of similar to what they did to this one, adding those 20 inch wheels to just make it look a little bit better. But overall, I must say I am impressed with the changes in the handling characteristics, just, just the overall way that it's kind of gliding down the road. Uh, the ride is smoother from the last Tahoe that I did a drive with. Steering is nice and responsive. It's nice and comfortable. You know, one thing that I really like over about the fact over the years, Chevrolet with their Suburbans and their Tahoes and, and all the different full-size SUVs, have definitely made some tremendous strides and improvements in the ride quality. I'm not feeling some of the vibrations and, and just the little bumps and stuff along the road here that I would have in the past on other Tahoes. Well, let's see here. We're coming up to a red light, so I'm going to, I haven't really thought about this yet as we've been driving along, but let's see here. The brake pedal, I'll tell you one thing I like here. Now, a lot of people are going to have their varying opinions about this as far as how the brakes work. It's really kind of a nice balance between a brake pedal that's really soft or a brake pedal that's really tight. It's kind of in between those and I would say would be very easy to get used to. You're not going to unintentionally brake check your passengers if you're not used to the braking on the Tahoe, at least on this particular one. I have to assume it's going to be the same way on all of them. Obviously, GM tries to make that consistent. So that's a nice feature. Overall visibility, of course, is very nice. And one thing, I will put this up on the screen. If you want to see the front camera view, there's a button you can push here on the screen itself that allows you to do that. It stays up for a total of eight seconds. And so that's a nice little feature I didn't mention earlier. But like I said, I'll get that on the screen for you to see and show you how to use that. Just the typical features that are common with this generation of the Chevrolet infotainment system. Okay, guys, I'm always interested to hear from you down in the comments section. So tell me, do you like the fifth generation better than the sixth generation of the Tahoe? Tell me why and or why not. Tell me in the comments which one you like most and what your favorite features are. And we're going to take a look at other trim levels as they become available. This is the only one, this LT, that I can get my hands on today here at Red River Chevrolet. But I sure appreciate my friends here at the dealership for loaning it to me and all of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch. As always, guys, I appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.